The Chase Bay's Dual Piston Brake Booster Elite with Bolt-On 6 to 1 Pedal Ratio is a manual brake setup that creates faster lap times for your track car and a more controllable drift or rally car. In this video, we're gonna go over why manual brakes are better, what's included, how it works, supported chassis, install tips and updates and improvements. You may be wondering why you would want to change to manual brakes on your car. The reason is, a manual brake can create controllable and consistent braking for the same experience every time, unlike power brakes, which are vacuum assisted, which makes the pedal throw different every time. One inch would be 500 PSI on one push, and then the next one, one inch would be 800 PSI. So when you do this, you make inconsistent brakes, which makes everything slower. You need to be able to push the brake and have the same experience every time. A properly set up manual brake, which is proper master cylinder size, proper pedal ratio, and of course, really good pads, creates the same exact braking every time. The modulation of max braking just before lockup is where the manual brakes really thrive. We call this the 90 to 99% zone. Finding the exact level of leg pressure to get that exact threshold is not possible with power brakes. They're just too inconsistent, especially with boost. The fact is, the fastest road race cars in the world have manual brakes, from F1 to NASCAR to GT4. So how can we achieve the manual brake function that we see in F1 and IMSA and NASCAR, but without the 5,000 plus price tag? Without days of prep, relocation of underdash components, and fabrication, the Chase Bay's Dual Piston Brake Booster Elite with Bolt-On 6 to 1 Pedal Ratio is the all-inclusive package to get you that high-end braking for under $1,000, and you can get everything in one place. So what all is included? A one-inch bore ultra-compact master cylinder designed by Chase Bay's and manufactured by an OE manufacturer that's been rigorously tested and DOT approved an isolated front and rear circuit high heat polypropylene fluid reservoir, a billet Chase Bay's reservoir cap with high heat vented diaphragm, a billet firewall adapter plate with raised mounting point, and by the way, the inside is hollowed out for weight reduction, an L Banjo front outlet fitting for easy front right and front left line routing with a stainless steel Banjo bolt, a stainless steel rear outlet hardline to adjustable proportioning valve, a carbon 4140 steel push rod and clevis, a stainless steel bolt-on 6 to 1 pedal ratio adapter. We start by removing the factory brake booster setup and installing our true dual piston master cylinder setup. It has isolated front and rear circuits within the reservoir so that if you lose front brakes, you're able to get to safety with the rear brakes and vice versa. Because of this, it's approved by FD, FIA, SCCA, WRC, and dozens of other sanctioning bodies. The important part is that the pedal ratio gets raised for a larger master cylinder. We include a bolt-on ratio increasing bracket. So what this does is raises the ratio, whichever the pedal or chassis calls for, to increase the leverage on the master cylinder. This allows you to put more force on the master cylinder so you can use a bigger master cylinder and it won't be difficult to push. The six to one ratio that we use is what's very common on underdash motorsport pedal boxes. So you'll see this in pedal boxes on high-end cars like NASCAR or GT4. This product allows you to unleash that same potential without all the underdash pedal box fabrication and time. It's near pedal box function with a bolt-on product. This product is chassis specific and we make it for dozens of different chassis. And since this is our most popular product, we're always developing for more chassis. So now that you have your Chase Bay's Dual Piston Brake Booster Delete, we're gonna share some tips with you to make sure that you have a successful install and that you get 100% performance out of this product. Probably the most common problem that we have 
is people running bad quality pads. The part store pads will not work for this. Manual brakes are incredible, but they increase your margin for error. We recommend Hawk Performance pads. We don't even work with them, but we have the best experience with them. They have different pads for different levels of use. On a street or a drift car, you want a good cold bite pad and we recommend the HPS and HP Plus. The HP Plus is an incredible pad, but it does squeak and make a lot of dust. So typically, even on a street car and drift car, we would run HPS front and HP Plus rear. Those pads are great, again, because they just have cold bite. You don't need to warm them up for them to work, but they work incredible under heavy use, drifting, comp, everything. For a track car, uh, it can get a little bit more complicated than what you're doing. If you're doing endurance or sprints or just track days, their ER1 pads are incredible. We love the DTC 60 and 30 combo. Uh, there's a lot of pads, but with that, it's a little more common that you have to warm up the pads, so you, you can expect to not have great pads in the, in the pits or in the street. It's only a, a few laps in when they start heating up that they'll start to work. The second most important thing is preloading the push rod on the master cylinder. So the reason that we have to do this is because in DOT approval use and just most master cylinders in general, there's three millimeters of nothingness when you push this. Three millimeters here down the pedal arm transfers into about an inch of just movement where no pressure is being output. And the way that we fix that is we just add preload into the push rod. So that means that once you have it set here, you would expand out the push rod to where it pushes the piston three millimeters. Now, we've done this a lot with every car here, and it can be quite cumbersome, but we wanna make that as easy as possible for you. So we've come up with a, a cool trick to do this easily. So when you're installing the dual piston into your car, install it as normal, and just add three millimeters worth of washers onto the flange of the master cylinder. So an M8 washer is about one and a half millimeters. So if you put two together, you can see that that comes out to three millimeters. So the reason that this is great is because you want to bleed the brakes and do the first drive with a non-preloaded master cylinder. Because what we found is that sometimes people would over preload the master cylinder and when they bled the brakes, they were actually introducing an air pocket. So we want you to not have any preload when you fully bleed the brakes and do a test drive. So put these two washers or three millimeters worth of washers, however you get there, on this flange and then put the pedal adapter on and then the push rod with the clevis on it get it all the way expanded to where there's no movement against the pedal, and then just bleed your brakes and then go for your initial drive. And you'll notice, that you'll notice the dead space in your pedal. It'll move about an inch without stopping the car. So once you go to your first drive and everything feels good, then you will undo these two bolts, remove these washers, and then boom, you'll have that three millimeters of preload. And you don't have to do what we've done or other customers before this video have done, where they take the push rod out, add three millimeters, and then are doing all this extra work. You just have to put it in once, remove those washers, and boom, it's preloaded. And what this will do is give you instant pedal fill. And the cool part about this too is that you'll get to feel the brakes without the preload. And then when you remove the washers, you'll get the preload. So it'll be uh, a moment to appreciate the preload. And you'll have instant braking. It'll feel just like a underdash pedal box. It costs four, five, six grand, but you get it for under $1,000. Something that we run into a lot with our customers is when an air pocket is stuck in the master cylinder, but fluid doesn't seem to have any air bubbles when you're bleeding at the caliper. Uh, which of course makes the pedal feel not great and the performance not great. So this is because the master cylinder was not bench bled. So make sure that you bench bleed this. It's very simple. It takes five or 10 minutes. And we even have a whole YouTube video on how to do this. A question that we get a lot is, will this work with ABS? And the answer is yes. We do not recommend it for older ABS units just because they're not great ABS units and really you're better off just deleting it because this creates such a controllable brake and you know exactly where your brakes are going to lock up. However, ABS, especially in series that allow it, you can keep it with this product. We keep it in our GLTC car, we've kept it in our GR86 Time Attack car, and we've got tons of customers that keep it. It's just make sure that that ABS is slightly modern. Typically anything 2000 and up is pretty all right and you can trust it.
And selling this product to thousands of customers and using it on our very own road race cars, time attack cars, and drift cars, we've found ways to make some improvements. The first improvement that we made was changing from 5 16 24 to 3 8 24. These are both carbon steel, but we just felt it was good to just go a little bit larger. We didn't have a mass problem or anything, but we felt, you know, why not do it if we can? And so with this, it looks almost like a tie rod that you'd have on your car. So we know that that's plenty strong enough with the increased leverage and increased force. And we also make them in several different sizes to suit different chassis. You'll see that we've increased where the hex is to make it as thick as possible instead of a collar addition. Another change that we made was changing from stainless to carbon steel. We really couldn't make it any thicker right here on the clevis because it's so slim under the pedals on stock assemblies, but changing to carbon steel was just something that one day when we were designing a product or, or, or a variation of this product, we thought, why not just change to carbon? We haven't really had a problem, but it's a stronger material that we can use. The last one is that in our own personal use, and we haven't seen this otherwise, is uh, we put just about as much force as a human could possibly have into a pedal adapter and found a fracture point. And so what we did, and this is not something that you can see, instead of just dropping this in and welding it, we made this machine piece with a shoulder where this has two millimeters of clearance and you can add significantly more rosette weld to where this got stronger. This is our most popular product and my personal favorite because you can get high-end motorsport braking and everything you need in one place for under $1,000. Brake lines that connect everything, the caliper lines, master cylinder adapter plate, pedal adapter, everything you need for the best braking that you can get. If you found this video helpful, like and subscribe. And if there's anything that you want to see from us, leave a comment. And if you have any questions, our customer service line is always open. And as always, do better.